everybody, Matt Brown, and we're gonna look at Milk It. So this one is, is a really interesting, cool song out. One of my favorites from In Utero. So we'll we'll get into all of the music theory behind uh, all of this atonal stuff that they're playing in and why all that stuff works. Okay, so uh, for this song, we're in the key of E minor, and we are tuned down a half step. Every string down a half step. So as I was saying, uh, the the clean parts on, on guitar are pretty much atonal, meaning that there's no sort of scale or anything like that that's being used. Um, mainly random notes, as you could say. Um, what you have to do, though, is, is play in time. So the notes that you choose isn't all that important, but you have to be aware of the rhythms that you're playing. So with this song, um, since it's kind of like the bass is doing like a very lightly syncopated 16th note bass groove, you can do a lot of things like 16th note rhythms, um, dotted 16th note type patterns, um, and occasionally he does throw in some triplet ideas. So let's take a look at uh, what the main track is doing here um, at the beginning of the song for the intro. I'll play exactly what's on the recording and then uh, talk about it a little bit. So, uh, you know, a bunch of gibberish. And so, um, like I said, you know, uh, be aware of the rhythm. So at the beginning, we're playing mainly dotted 8th to 16th type figures. At the end, he closes with uh, um, some triplets to kind of give it sort of a transitional bup, 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 bup. And, and then, um, so the next part, the, the, the main riff that comes in is um, a lot more straightforward. So uh, I'll play that for you. It goes... All right, so that's the next riff there, um, and we're what we're doing. I'll give you the chords. We have a B flat five, which is three strings, uh, so six, eight, eight. Then we're going. So we're strumming that three times, doing then two strums on the E five, which is seven, nine, nine here. Coming to a G five for. Uh, two strums, so three, five, five. And then what he does is basically the open fourth and fifth strings, which gives you like a D5 slash A chord. Three more strums of the G5. Two strums of a G sharp five, so just moving that up a fret for each finger. And then three on your E5. So just the first measure here slowly is like this. So the next measure is just an abbreviated version of what I just played. You're going to stop on the G5. Like that. Uh, and then, you know, that, that whole thing, that two-bar figure happens again, so... What the overdub guitar does is it just keeps going with the riff. So it would do on the last measure before the transition. All right, so now we are into like a little interlude back to kind of a clean tone that comes in before the verse and the singing. So let's check that out. crazy. Um, more or less what you're, you're shooting for with, with this is the first two beats of each measure, you want to be playing like a B flat note. And he's playing this at the first fret of the fifth string. So at the beginning here, he's just holding it out for a half note. And then the second half of the measure, you want to be playing an E chord, um, or sorry, an E string mainly, or an E note somewhere. So what he does in the first measure is... So he's playing the E up here on the second string too. Uh, so the next idea he plays is. So he's, he's doing kind of like a B flat for the first half and open E, and then he's doing this. So that's an eighth fret on your third string, seventh fret on your fourth string, and then the eighth fret on the first string. 
So, all right, so let's move on and check out the, the next little idea. Okay, so here he's playing, same idea, uh, B flat at the beginning of the measure, E for the second half of the measure, and then what he's doing on the four end of each measure is those two notes. So that's the, th uh, the third string of the second fret and the third fret of your first string. Um, and and that's, that's what he does there for both measures. Then the verse is pretty much just like improvised 16th note bass rhythms on this B flat and E note concept, like. So that's, that's all he's doing for the, the, the verse part. So let's move on and check out what happens next. So the next part we have is, I'm gonna call it the pre-chorus. This is the doll steak uh, test meat type part. Um, and it's it's the the main riff that we talked about before the type thing. All right, so that gives way to a, a chorus, which is the look on the bright side suicide type part, um, and that sounds like this. This is a different riff. So slowly, that's. So, uh, similar, um, mainly the, all the same chords, so we have three strums on a B flat 5, going to four strums of an E5, then we have the, the little open string deal. Um, so you're doing three on a G5, one on a G sharp 5, and then four on an E. So again, you get... So that's it. All right, let's let's move on and check out the next part. So I'm going to call this the second interlude. It's or second pre-verse, maybe as uh, something else you could call it. And um, what he's doing here is just uh, um, the the same thing he was doing before, kind of as a pre-verse. So. So then he's, he's back to the just playing the B flat and the open E type stuff. All right, then so what happens next is we have another pre-chorus and another chorus, and then it's kind of like an atonal guitar solo. So uh, let's, let's move on to talk about that. So uh, with the guitar solo, it's rhythmically much more busy than the other atonal parts. So you wanna play, um, you know, pretty steady 16th note type rhythms. Um, uh, something, you know, like that. So, um, what you do want to do is kind of try to build some tensions with, tension with this solo. So that can be accomplished by, by playing higher notes and just like ascending or descending chromatic lines. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll play this along with the computer so you can kind of get a, a feel for how you might want to do this. Something like that, uh, you know. Mainly, as long as you're you're playing in time, um, it's it's gonna work. Something that you can do too is if you want to play some double stops, playing some sort of like repeating interval, um, like whether it's like just a major third on these strings, um, or like something. Like the tritone interval works really well, um, and, and maybe like just playing that melodically too, like. You, you 
know, stuff like that. Um, so, you know, work your little tritone shapes, maybe your major third shapes, um, in, in like your chromatic scale, like just ascending little chromatic patterns. So the song ends, we have a pre-chorus and then a final chorus. The final chorus is twice as long as the other choruses. And the way it ends is like this. <laughs> So it just ends on a, a G5 after you you finish the, the last time through the riff and you're just, you know, just basically a uh, staccato uh, eighth note there. Um, so that is it for Milk It. I did actually transcribe, I don't know why, um, but all of the, the atonal parts that, that are going on in this song uh, on the actual recording. So if you're interested in seeing that, just, uh, you know, yell at me, shoot me an email and uh, I'll, I'll send that all to you. So I'm Matt Brown, uh, please subscribe, and uh, I've got plenty of more lessons coming. Thanks a lot.